So hi everyone, thanks a lot for tuning in to my presentation titled I Predator, Predictors of Women's Space Sexual Abuse. This is a joint work with Dr. Adele Forth over at Carleton University. Now, before we jump into the nitty gritty of the study, I think we should take a step back and acknowledge how technology has infiltrated seemingly every single aspect of our lives. A recent estimate found that on average adults spend about six hours every day online and a lot of this time is spent interacting with others. Now, this could be a really great thing, especially when you consider how a really good memory is only a couple of clicks away. But what about the memories that you kind of wish to forget, or those you didn't want to share with others in the first place? Which brings us to image-based sexual abuse, a form of technology facilitated as sexual violence that can be defined as the sharing of someone else's nude or sexually explicit images without their consent. Now, image-based sexual abuse could take a few forms. Uh, one of them is cyber flashing, or as is best known as dick pics, where you send unsolicited uh, uh, explicit images to someone else, upskirting or down blousing, deepfake pornography, which is the algorithmically synthesized pornographic material, and the non-consensual dissemination of intimate images or as it is often called as revenge pornography. Now in my other presentation we are going to talk a little bit more about why the term revenge pornography is not so great. So if you're interested in that, please um, also view the other presentation. Now in this work we wanted to explore some of the factors and characteristics that would be predictive of image-based sexual abuse perpetration. We looked into demographic factors like gender because previous work has found that males are more likely to report perpetration of uh, sexual abuse and sexual orientation because um, LGBTQ plus individuals were found in previous work to be more likely to engage in sexting which could lead them vulnerable for future victimization of women's based sexual abuse or perpetration for it. We also looked into the dark tetrad, uh, which comprises of psychopathy, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and sadism. These personality traits have been associated with sexual violence previously, so we thought it was a natural fit for this study. For attitudes, we looked into uh, believing image-based sexual abuse-related myths because work in rape uh, myth acceptance has shown that those who accept those myths are more likely to also engage in uh, sexual violence or excuse it. And we also looked into two different forms of entitlement. Sexual entitlement, where you think that your own sexual needs uh, take precedence over anything else, and aggrieved entitlement, which refers to the tendency of those who hold certain privileges to lash out against those that the thing may take those privileges away. Now, the research questions that were created for this study were first, we wanted to see what the prevalence of women's based sexual abuse perpetration would be. We also wanted to see uh, the factors that would be related to the perpetration and proclivity for women's based sexual abuse, as well as the enjoyment and approval of women's based sexual abuse. To do so, we recruited a sample of a little over 800 participants. It was a convenient uh, student sample, so uh, the majority was female, heterosexual, and either white or Middle Eastern in origin. Participants were asked to answer a series of service and questionnaires, and here in light purple you have the dependent variables, and then in dark blue are the independent variables. So we use the IBSA perpetration scale that asks participants whether or not they had distributed or threatened to distribute someone else's picture without their consent in a series of very specific contexts. We also had the event spawn proclivity scale, which has a series of scenarios uh, that all end in the dissemination of someone else's nude sexual image without consent, and then ask participants whether or not they would do the same thing, as well as how they would feel if they were in that situation, whether or not they would feel regret, uh, or anger, enjoyment, etc. Participants also completed the short talk tetrad, the sexual image based abuse myth acceptance, the hands on sex attitude questionnaire, and the aggrieved entitlement scale that was created for this study. First, we gauge the 
a prevalence for the proclivity or for acts of non consensual dissemination of intimate images perpetration, we found that a little less than half of our sample had given some endorsement of proclivity for such acts. Almost three quarters at least somewhat enjoyed such acts and practically everyone in our sample approved it. Now, these results are alarming, especially if you consider that acts of image-based sexual abuse very often take place online in public spaces, so future work should definitely look into bystander interventions or how bystanders interact with perpetrators and victims of image-based sexual abuse. Uh, next, we did a binomial logistic regression to look into the predictors for proclivity. We found that um, males were, had about 35% less likely to endorse that they had proclivity for the non-consensual dissemination of intimate images, and that those scoring higher in sadism, sexual entitlement, or endorsing more myths related to image-based sexual abuse all had a higher uh, proclivity for, for perpetration of uh, revenge pornography. Finally, we found that those with no history of image-based sexual abuse perpetration also were about 40% less likely to have uh, proclivity for the non-consensual dissemination of intimate images. For enjoyment, we found perhaps unsurprisingly that those scoring higher in sadism, as well as those endorsing a higher number of image-based sexual abuse um, myth acceptance, uh, enjoyed uh, instances of um, uh, image-based sexual abuse cases at a higher rate, as well as those with uh, no history of victimization were also 40% less likely to say that they enjoyed such acts. Moving on to perpetration of actual image-based sexual abuse, we found that about one in six in our sample had at least once in their life, ever since they were 16, distributed or threatened to distribute the sexual image of someone else without their permission. As for the predictors, we found that those scoring higher in psychopathy and narcissism were more likely to report that they had perpetrated such acts in their lives, and that those with no history of victimization were about 65% less likely to report that they had also perpetrated image-based sexual abuse, meaning that those who had at some point in their lives been victimized in that way also perpetrated the same acts. Of course, this is a cross-sectional study, so we can't really make any uh, inferences about whether or not victimization leads to perpetration or vice versa. Now it seems like the uh, literature on image-based sexual abuse and technology facilitated sexual violence is still at its infancy and so there's still lots more ground to cover. I personally think that a participatory design method that would recruit and engage image-based sexual abuse survivors as active researchers rather than as simple data points would give us a lot of unique insights onto the impact of image-based sexual abuse and would also move the conversation forward as to what image-based sexual abuse is, what constitutes image-based sexual abuse, and what we should do to stop it. Now, I know in this presentation, I didn't really have a lot of time to discuss moral disengagement, but I think it could be a really valuable uh, framework to conceptualize image-based sexual abuse and ground theory surrounding it. Finally, the technology threshold for deepfake pornography is seemingly getting lowered by the day, so policy and research alike should be proactive and should look into ways to detect them, protect potential victims, flag the fake videos and get them down. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, and now um, I'm open to hearing any thoughts you have, any comments or any questions. Thanks again.